Okay, so I see some familiar names and some familiar uh, people who have logged on. Um, as you know, when I like to run sessions, I want to try and make it as interactive as possible, which can be really challenging on these uh, webinars with a large group of people who have logged in. Um, but we're going to be using Mentimeter this afternoon. Um, and for those of you who may be familiar, um, it's the usual way to join, but otherwise I have just posted the instructions in the chat. But what I'm going to do is I've just put a QR code and some instructions up on the screen. So what you um, can do is if you pick up your phone and you scan that QR code, the other thing you can do is just go to menti.com and then you can uh, type in the code which has been um, put out there, which is 70530025. Once you type in that code and press submit, you are logged into today's session. And that means when we do have interactive slides, you can participate. Uh, we, there is an option there to ask questions. Now, depending on how much time we have before we finish in 45 minutes time, and depending on how many questions, I may or may not be able to answer the questions, but feel free to submit them and I'll get them to you if I can. So I'm just going to leave the code up there just for a few moments. If you'd like to scan it, then you can take part. Okay, so what we're going to be looking today uh, at today is stable futures for child victims of trafficking. And we're going to really be talking about why this is important and what do we actually mean. For those of you who know ECPAT UK, you know that this is the name of our campaign, the Stable Futures campaign. You know that this is one of the key aims that we're trying to achieve for our young people is to make sure they have stable futures. And we're just going to be going into a bit more detail about what do we mean by this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check in with everyone. We're going to see how everyone is doing. So if you are able to log into Mentimeter, then you can now answer this question. How are you doing today? I have also just put the link into the chat if you'd like to take part. Okay, so what you can see is as people are submitting their responses all up and down the country, um, it's feeding directly into today's session. Yep, so people feeling good, lots of people feeling cold. Hopefully you can be comfortable wherever you are, put on the heat in, maybe wrap a blanket around your legs. People are interested in this session anticipated learning good some people feeling busy again we will try and finish exactly on 245 so we don't eat into too much of your day wonderful okay then so we're going to go straight into the topic and if we are talking about stable futures then really to understand why this is so important we actually need to understand the experience of young people um, once they come into care once they are in a post-trafficking situation so um oh i've missed out a slide i forgot about this um, i'm interested to know where you guys are coming from who have listened today so um, you would have seen the screen has changed and you're able to submit your responses. So before we get into the content, I did jump ahead of myself. I'm curious to know where are people logging in from today? Okay, lots coming from London and the Southeast, a few from the Southwest. We do have slightly lower numbers than we normally do. I think it might be a time of year thing. Good, okay. But we do have people from all around the country as well. Great. Okay then, no one from outside of the UK today, which is absolutely fine. Um, we are very much focused on the UK context today. And the next question I've got then is, where would you kind of fit yourself um, now, the, we primarily have professionals who join us who work with vulnerable children, um, and I'm curious to hear what kind of sector of work would you say you're um, based in? It might not be that you um, 
are sort of attending in a professional capacity as well. So I know a lot of people might be clicking other as well. Wonderful. So we have quite a mix there. We have some people from health or education, some people in local authority safeguarding, law enforcement, the third sector, um, and plenty of others joining as well. So very welcome to you. So um, just for those of you who may not be familiar with ECPAT, um, we do have our youth program based in London and in the Greater London area. You can refer young people to us. So if you want to find out more, then you can contact us after if you, there are any young people you'd like to refer. Um, we produce research into child trafficking, modern slavery and exploitation. Um, as I've already mentioned, we do run campaigns related to issues child victims of trafficking face. Uh, we do uh, try and inform policy as much as possible and we have a variety of different training programs available for practitioners which I know some of you have already attended and um, while we're here I'll just let you know um, we do have some training available in December so if you're interested in coming on one of our training programs um, I've just posted the link to where you can book onto it if you'd like to. So if we're going to think about stable futures, we have to think about the situation so many child victims of trafficking face once they are in a post-trafficking situation. So what kinds of challenges do we think child victims of trafficking face here in the UK? So if you're logged into Mentimeter, then you're able to put some of your ideas in here. So I'll just pause for a moment. Okay, so lots of different ideas coming in then. People talking about loneliness, isolation, lack of information, uncertainty, lack of confidence, challenges with housing, no status, that might be referred to immigration status, post-traumatic st stress disorder, lack of support. All of these challenges are there. And what people have really picked up well is um, re-trafficking and further exploitation. And that's a really important challenge that young people face that we need to keep in mind. Absolutely. So what do we see in so many of our young people's position once they are so-called rescued? once they are in a position where they are no longer being trafficked and exploited. We see that they are in a very uncertain situation. They don't know what's happening. Things are changing quickly. Lots of people coming in and out of their lives. They don't know what's happening now and they don't know what's going to happen. They see insecurity, insecurity in terms of their immigration status in terms of their criminal status. We know lots of child victims of trafficking are criminalized and they don't know what's happening. Do they feel safe? Do they feel secure? And the answer to that so often is no. And this instability, so much change happening, having to move, having different workers, not knowing what is gonna happen, not feeling safe and not feeling secure. This all adds up to a situation of precarity. Young people are not feeling safe. They are not feeling secure, but instead they are in a very precarious situation. The other thing that we need to think about in the context of um, stable futures is the impact of trauma. And recently when doing some research on this, there is this idea of one of the key long-term impacts of trauma being a sense of force shortened future. So this is a quote from the Istanbul uh, Protocol that looks at things like uh, torture and trafficking and abuse. 
And it says he or she has a sense of a foreshortened future without expectation of a career, marriage, children or a normal lifespan. So since this was observed in the 1990s, there's been lots of research being put on this. And what we see is research is saying that this is an impact of trauma. And in particular, you see there has been research showing that this is a particular impact when someone has been trafficked, is that they have this sense of a foreshortened future. So what is the impact? of this precarity? What is the impact of that trauma, that instability, that uncertainty? What do people think? Good, fear, vulnerability, young people being worried about survival, feeling scared, loneliness, non-compliance. Absolutely. We need to understand what impact this has on young people's actions, on their behaviour, increased risk to, of mental health problems, not having any hope, mistrust. You're absolutely right to all of these things. Okay. Ultimately, this significantly increases the chance of re-trafficking and exploitation. And just to give you a bit of an insight, this is a, a quote from an ECPAT UK youth group member. Um, and I'm going to read the whole quote because it really shows this uncertainty, this insecurity um, and this precariousness. So she said, my experience in social services and foster care was very difficult. I had some foster carers which were nice, but some I did not like. I, did, I had different social workers who told me different things and promised me things that did not happen. I did not know what was going to happen from one day to the next. There is that uncertainty. There is that instability. So what impact does that have on young people? In my head, I thought I should go back to my madam. I was abused there, but I had managed to survive. Now I was so scared. I can see why young people run away to their trafficker. It is better the devil you know. So what you saw in the second half of that quote is the impact of this precarity. When young people have been impacted, this as a consequence increases the risk of re-trafficking, increases the risk of further exploitation. She says that she was so scared and her initial thought was about survival. And therefore she thought, it maybe is the better the devil I know. This is um, a bit of a, uh, some views from one of our other young people. Um, so she uh, has shared this story uh, with us and she wants us to share with others. So she was trafficked from her home country um, to a country in the Gulf where she was um, abused and exploited primarily for domestic servitude, although there was multiple forms of exploitation that accompanied it. And um, she thought that she was trapped there for, forever. Okay, She had no sense that there was a way that she could uh, free herself from this situation. A few years later, um, she accompanied her family to a holiday in the UK, and that was when she saw her opportunity to escape. And that's exactly what she did. She escaped, she approached herself, um, her authorities, and um, this is what she said has happened since that day that she approached services. Since then, I've had years of being misunderstood. Ten years later, I am still waiting. I cannot do anything. I cannot work. I don't want to start studying because what if I'm made to leave? I can only think about today. I am not independent, so I am not free. 
the waiting made me think about Dubai. I was abused there, but I had managed to earn something little. So she would send that money or the trafficker actually sent the money directly back to her family. I was thinking how much over 10 years could I have earned whilst I was here in the UK waiting and living off vouchers. Once I got a letter saying I was going to be deported, it didn't tell me when, just that it could happen at any time. I did not know what was going to happen. This was the same as when I was trafficked. So two things there. Number one is that when young people are in this unstable, this precarious situation, we are imitating the, their experiences when they've been trafficked. And number two, we see how this insecurity, this instability and uncertainty could lead to re-trafficking. Thankfully, this young person wasn't re-trafficked, but you can see that she said she questioned whether she should have ran away that day. If she knew what her life would have been like in the UK post-trafficking, maybe she would have thought twice about it, which is a really, really sad position um, to be in. So this is what we see. We see that when there is precariousness, uncertainty, instability, when young people have very limited options, when they have limited alternatives or protective factors, this is where the vulnerability to re-trafficking is very, very high. We know in reality, contact with traffickers is incredibly difficult to stop. We know traffickers will use social media. They'll ring them up. They'll try and contact them indirectly through family and um, peer networks, okay? And when you put these two things together, this is when re-trafficking can happen, okay? You see the impact of an insecure immigration status can make a young person so vulnerable to re-trafficking. And for those of you who are aware, this is exactly what our research Heading Back to Harm showed. This was ECPAT UK's research looking at the um, prevalence of young child victims of trafficking going missing from local authority care. Um, and we did an updated uh, piece of research uh, called Still in Harm's Way back in 2018 as well. Um, so this just shows that this is not theoretical. This is actually happening. We saw missing persons episodes and re-trafficking is very prevalent amongst child victims of trafficking. And again, this has come at a particular pertinent time. This is a really big issue. Um, what you can see is this week alone, uh, the University of Nottingham Rights Lab and the in, an, Independent Anti-Slavery Commissioner have released a report looking at the issue of re-trafficking. Now, what did their research find? It increases the risk of re-trafficking. They said poor initial identification of trafficking the response of authorities and inadequate support. And again, this is where we can see um, stable futures is so important. When we see a young person doesn't have that security, when they don't have that certainty or that safety, that is when re-trafficking is happening. And then the final thing to think about is um, the Nationality and Borders Bill, which is um, currently being considered at the moment. You might have seen um, a bit broader what ECPAT UK is doing with others in the sector in terms of campaigning around this bill, uh, advocating for maybe some changes. And the key concerns that we have is that this bill is not going to contribute to creating stable futures for child victims of trafficking. It is actually going to make the situation of child victims of trafficking more insecure more uncertain. It's going to mean less support, not more support, for child victims of trafficking. So if you're interested, um, then please go to our website and we have a lot more information um, about this Nationality and Borders Bill and the impact it is going to have um, on our young people.
So now we're in that position where we get a bit of an understanding about where uh, what young people's experiences are. Now we can start thinking about what do we mean by stable futures, okay? And when you get that background context that I've just gone through, you can start to see why stable futures might be so important. But it's all very well for me to say something. So I think the best people who could explain this is our young people ourselves. So we are very lucky to have two ECPAT UK youth group members on the call today. Um, and one of them is going to explain um, what stable futures means to him. And then we're going to have a second speaker talking about what professionals can do to support young people having stable futures. Um, so I'd like to welcome our first speaker to unmute and share. Hey, hi everyone. Um, so nice to have you all on, in this conference. And I'm really, really so happy to see like there are quite a lot of professionals in the webinar today. So thank you so much. To me, like um, um, stable features actually mean like in my own perspective, based on my experience, it actually means like having a secure status, like having that security. For example, lack of this secure, lack of status actually impacted me a lot. Like basically when my mates, my colleague are actually doing things in just one way, I actually do my own in like three times. Like I have to take like three steps before getting to where my, my colleague actually went just in one step. For example, looking at like applying into university, like it was so, it was so tough, especially for young people that haven't got their secure status. They will still need to go through the like um, the sanctuary scholarship ways and all of that, which is so hard in times of that. So I just feel like stable futures to me personally means like having my status settled, having that one as well. And as well, another one is like having my basic needs met. Like for example, like the accommodation path is so hard for, for young people that have been subject to traffic that haven't got their status in the UK. It's so hard for them to actually access those support, like maybe accommodation, having that, having the opportunity to work around, like just do some employment for yourself, contribute to the economy as well in your own way, your own little way of making money. And as well, planning ahead for the future, for example, Many young people like myself have, have actually had the aims of having like several businesses like running into my head because I started business in school. So we just see many opportunities out there that we can actually go in for. But then without having that security, we can actually access all of their support. So that's like our future has been determined by the government, basically, in a nutshell, like our future has been determined by the government. So I can't actually do anything except the government say you can do it so which is which is not what my colleagues actually are into so i think this can actually open many young people to can actually subject them subject them back to the traffic and if you could actually take a good look at this point so and another thing apart from having this basic needs met and then having your security so um, the other thing is just having that free mindset, like there's nothing bothering me anymore. So like my future is stable. I'm okay. I can actually create my family. You know what I mean? Like there are some family that you just got yourself into that you don't even know where you're going. So it's just one family that you are born into. You don't, you don't have anything to change in that. But there are some other family that you have to create yourself. So this family creation by myself is just like a stable future. Like I have to choose who my family is now, apart from the family I was born into. So that actually create like a sense of stable future to me as well. Like having to take care of my kids myself, not having to abandon them the way I've experienced I've experienced in the past. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even want my children to even experience just one bit of it. So that's why that's why I see our stable futures, like having the, all of those, all of those all together, having that security from the government to say like, yes, I can actually move from one place to another and come back into the country. You can actually go out 
for holidays anytime any day and come back to the UK and and start working and paying your taxes go out and have fun like other people can actually do so I think that's that's really what stable for Asia is for me and I'm sure it's, it will be the same for many young people out there just that sense of like freedom freedom like I'm free to do this I'm free to do that all of it I think that's really really good thing and I'm really happy to see like many people many people in this conference actually have that potential like to join this webinar like it's so amazing to see like many professionals are here and they could actually support us in achieving this table future as well so thank you all for having me thank you so much for adding that to you so some of those key points that i could pick out there number one was a young person having their basic needs met okay those basic needs are so important if we are to prevent young people from being trafficked number two is having that secure immigration status you heard t saying if he was to com compare himself to his peers he would need to go through three or four different things to even get where his other his peers are at OK, you see how that really limits the opportunities available for young people and it creates this sense of uncertainty and instability. And then finally, what T talked about so well was this that free mindset, that free mentality where you can focus on your future because you're not worrying about um you know things like whether you've got status whether you're going to be allowed to stay and so on so thank you so much for adding this and i'm going to pass us over to our next um, youth group member Kay. um and you are going to maybe suggest from your point of views what you think practitioners can do to support young people having stable futures thank you so much phil and um, thank you everyone for having me here. Um, I'm so happy to be here today. I've seen a lot of professionals, as they said the other, um, coming out for we young people is really so inspiring to see that our future is going to be stable. Uh, what I think professionals can do in terms of having stable future, first thing is, you know, when you're in care, they try to do some pathway plan for you. There are a lot of things going on people sometimes the professionals don't go back to our pathway plan after we turn it in they believe you have pathway plan before you turn it in but they don't continue that way is this young people progressing or these young people is no more in the system you know they need that kind of support to make sure this guy this person know what they want to do in the future and in the sense that there are some young people as well they don't know what they want to be in the future maybe like they are just 16 they don't even know maybe they want to be a doctor a lawyer there should be some employability um skills for them maybe telling them to try a lot of different ways it could be can you just work with any shares do you feel like you enjoy it? it's not it's, it doesn't have to be a big job you can be like supporting them to have that kind of experience. You can be an internship in any profession that you feel like this person could be good in this way. Because professionals are good in accessing young people and what they can be. You know, when you access this person, this person really know what, maybe this person does not have any idea about what they want to be. Try to explore instead of just seeing them like, oh, you don't have access to public funds. You don't need to, to emphasize on those clauses, we just need to find solution in how how can this person determine their future. So that's one of the things that I think another way is professional standing up for young people in terms of the police and everything like that. We experience a lot when it comes to police um, or maybe having a distrust in our stories. You know, what one thing I just want everyone to remember is just that. You are not in our story, you know, it's not the way you think it is. A lot of people just think that, oh, you are being trafficked, or you get paid, you do this. It's not the way it is. It is more than that. Even though if they get paid, remember, if you are working in the UK securely, your family are not at risk of your wages or anything. But we young people, our family are at risk. We must work because our family are at risk. We must work before because our friends or anything, they are all at risk. 
Because if we don't do it, it's either we lost our family member or we lost ourselves as well. So we need you professional to make sure like let young people feel like I'm working for you, not for the government. I'm working for your progress, not for the government. You know, indirectly you are working for the government. We all understand that. But when you help in building an asset, which is we young people, when you help in building us, that means we, we have increase in assets in the, in the economy. We have increase in value as a nation. It's not just about just one person. This is about a whole nation. The more you make young people to have a stable future, the more we have a stable nation as well. I think that's what I just want to say for now. Thank you. Thank you so much for adding that case. So thinking about really practical things that professionals can do to support the stable futures of child victims of trafficking. So we talked about things like long term planning. We need to make sure young people are supported even after they turn 18 as well. Um, we heard the importance of advocacy, of understanding the context in which child victims of trafficking are in are so important. Um, and I'd love like to just add um, a voice of one other young person. Um, now, if anyone joined an online event that we did in, um, in June of this year, then this will be familiar. I'm just going to share a clip from um, that event that we did in June. And you hear a young person talking about the importance of um, supporting young people thinking about their future. Um, so I'll just play that now. You should have sound in a moment. Is basically when a child has been trafficked, the child never thought about their future anymore. What they think about is survival. So you need to actually, when you're supporting them, you need to remind them about their future. Be positive. Yeah, even though even though you know, even if, even though you know that oh their paper, they need to sort out their documents or whatever before they can have, before they can start probably um what they want to do in future. Ask them what they want to do in future. A lot of times they will tell you, I don't know. Because why? They actually don't know what they want to do anymore. Because they're not thinking about it. But you can get through to them by asking them, okay. When you are when like when you are back home or whatever, what do you like doing? What did you like? What were you thinking about being in the future? So you can actually get like you can actually get a bit like bit of pieces like to put together to understand. Okay, you know what? This is what I want to be. Okay, I want to be fashion designer or something. Okay, since you want to be a fashion designer, so you can start talking to them about about designing. So you can start talking to them. You know what? Don't like like. That will actually bring joy back to them to say, don't worry, I know this, this doesn't look like really cool the way you want it right now, but don't worry, just keep focusing on that fashion designer you say you want to be. If, it, if, it, if, it, if, if possible, at least when you like, just if possible, go on YouTube, watch um, designs, do these, watch this, watch that, so that once your document has been sorted out, your, um, has been sorted out then you push through what you want to push through. Like, you know, encourage them about their future. Because then you are reminding them that there is something, there is, there is a future ahead of them. So what you could hear from that young person sharing is that when a young person has been trafficked, all they are thinking about is survival. He said, if you ask young people who have been trafficked what they want from their future, they don't know because they have been too focused on survival for too long. And he said what was so important for him was professionals around him talking to him about the future. And he said by having those conversations, it made me think, it made me plan for the future. It made me realize that I have a future beyond exploitation. And that can be so important for young people, showing that they have an, uh, an alternative. 
and um, helping them to get there. So a few key points that I would um, recommend to practitioners when thinking about stable futures. Number one is that before we think about a young person's future, we need to make sure that they have everything they need in the present. You heard a quote earlier where a young person said, I don't want to study because what if I'm made to leave? Now, the challenge that she had is that practitioners were talking to her all the time about counselling, therapy, education, but she was still in a state of survival. She didn't know how she would pay for her next meal. Now, when young people are in that position, they cannot think about the future. So we need to first focus and making sure our young people's needs are met in the present. You heard um, T there talking about the importance of making sure basic needs are met. Only once young people's present is safe and secure, can we start helping young people with the future? Support young people in getting their immigration status. I know as a safeguarding practitioner or as a health practitioner, you might think that that is beyond me. I, I, that's not part of my role. But actually, we all need to support young people um, and support that process however you can, because ultimately it matters for safeguarding and preventing re-trafficking. Talk to young people about education and employment opportunities and then help a young person find a community, find a family, find a group of friends. You heard Kay there talking about the importance of family and making his own family here in the UK. Just to note on this, our young people say that practitioners like to focus on the past. Most of our young people say People who work with them want to talk about the past, but that's not what our young person needs. Our young people say they need to focus on the present, first of all, and then secondly, focus on the future. OK, and I think that's a really, really important message for us to take on from our young people. So I'd like to know what your ideas are. What could you do in your professional context to support young people having stable futures? What would this look like in practical terms for you? So I'd be interested to hear your ideas. Good, so a few ideas coming in. Making sure young people have a safe space, helping young people with university applications, even talking to them about university might be something that's really, really important. Listen to what they need, absolutely. Provide consistency, long-term support for young people. Talk to young people about future possibilities, help them realize it, absolutely. The clip that I shared a few minutes ago from the event back in June, um, the young person in that uh, event, he talked about how important it was when he got taken, taken on a day out to the beach. And he said it was the first time in his life that he realised that children go to the beach and have fun. And it was when he realised that this was a possibility for him, that this could be his future. That was so important for him. Yeah, helping with transport, being practical, making sure they can get to college, making sure um, that they are able to get around. They're not stuck in a single place. Encouraging them, making sure they have enough support. Absolutely. And if we can do all of those things, if we can um, provide that stable future, provide certainty, safety, 
and security, then we have a chance at stopping young people being re-trafficked and further exploited. If we are concerned about re-trafficking, then focus on stable futures. So these are some ideas that um, we've kind of developed here at ECPAT from doing our long-term work with young people. We've talked about education, training and employment opportunities. There's this idea from Professor Ravi Kohli about helping young people rediscover ordinariness. I think this is a really important idea. Young people who have been trafficked have not had ordinary lives no sort of idea of a normal childhood anywhere in the world would see this as a normal childhood and therefore we need to help young people rediscover ordinariness eating together having fun laughing thinking about learning these are really important for young people we need to have discussions with young people about the future and about goals. We need to recognise the progress and achievements young people have made already. It might be really difficult for them to recognise it themselves. We need to support young people with their immigration processes. Maybe we need to think about stay and put options when young people are in care so they can stay with their carers beyond 18 years old. We need good quality parallel pathway planning, which again is something that um, Kay talked about earlier. Now, as I mentioned at the start, we have a campaign here at ECPAT called the Stable Futures Campaign. Um, we made this campaign based on listening to young people. This wasn't actually what we thought our campaign would be about, but what we did is we sat down and really listened to young people and what they articulated was needing this stable future. So what we'd really like is for everyone to support our stable futures campaign. So I've just put the link up in the um, chat, which takes us to our campaign webpage. And you can look at the petitions there, you can write to your MP, and we've got a draft letter there, um, and really join our support needing stable futures for child victims of trafficking. Okay, so we're running this event today as part of our Big Give Week. Some of you may have been on the um, uh, other event that we did earlier on in the week, looking at youth programme and the idea of family. Um, if you would like to support ECPAT UK, then this is a perfect time to do it because everything donated this week is match funded and will be doubled. So if that is something that you'd like to contribute to, we'd be extremely grateful. And I've just put the link in there. Um, what the money will be going towards is our hampers for young people around Christmas. OK, so if you'd like to support this, then your donation will be um, going towards providing um, a Christmas hamper for young people, trying to provide them everything they need and more. So the final thing to me from me is just to say thank you so much for joining. I've seen that we are one minute to 2.45. So that means that unfortunately, I'm not going to take any questions. I know that there were a couple of questions in there. Um, we will post a recording of this up on our website, as well as the handout slides. If you registered on Eventbrite, I'll send them out to you. Um, but otherwise we will make the slides available. If you're interested in ECPAT UK's work or supporting us, please go to our website to find out more. And the other thing that you can do is get in contact with me if you have any questions or inquiries about the work that we're doing, um, whether that's the youth programme, training or our campaigns. So um, I'd like to just finish there. Thank you so much for Kay. Thank you so much to T for taking the time and joining us today so we can hear from a young person's uh, perspective what stable futures means. Thank you for so uh, for all of you for joining today. Um, I hope to see and hear from some of you again. Um, so I will finish there. I hope you have a good afternoon. And thank you very much for joining.